metal number two, mambo number five. Immortal Chords. To me, Immortal was a band that I got a lot of uh, inspiration from when I started making and playing black metal. I did not really listen a hell of a lot to them, but I listened to the album called At the Heart of Winter and Sons of Northern Darkness. Funny thing is I ended up playing with Abbath for some time in the beginning of that project, but I believe that this band has had a big impact on Norwegian black metal and the world trying to create this feeling of winter and uh, that basic ice cold feeling that you get from black metal. When it comes to icy vibes, Immortal is one of the best bands out there. Yeah, I just wanted to check in on some of the chords they use. I think it's called some kind of dyads or something, but like I mentioned, I don't really know crap about music theory. Let's just look at chords used by Immortal and other bands. So one by one, for example, uses the power chord. And then you go into this dyad or what the hell it's called. Basically you're playing E and then you're also playing E. But you get different vibes of the chords. It's an amazingly awesome riff combined with blast beats and shit. Another chord used a lot by Immortal is this one. This chord myself in my bands because I don't I don't like this variation of the the chord. Uh, I prefer doing it like this. <laughs> Like I showed you in part one, but Immortal does also does this one. But for instance, in one by one, they use this one. No doubt about it. Definitely has that winter feeling. Now let's look at the other song. I'm actually not sure. Is that All Shall Fall? I think so. And in this song we have the chord I just mentioned, the one I showed you in uh, part one of this Black Metal Guitar series. <laughs> string and 11th fret on the G string. What they do is just pull this chord even higher up the neck. These chords are definitely something you can uh, you know, embrace and start using uh, when you are composing your own black metal stuff, when you are trying to create the feeling of winter and cold. Until I started playing with, uh, with Abbath, I never sat down and actually 
learned these songs, but I was always kind of, I was a young dude at the time, 22, 23. I was listening to it and I uh, started looking for ways to, to capture this feeling of winter and cold and all that stuff. All these chords was something I was able to, you know, um, find just through listening to the to the songs and just sitting at home just you know jamming and trying to hear what are these guys doing and uh, the band I used to play in uh, back in the earlier days was called Elite and we were starting to play around with these kind of chords when we did our last album uh, called we Own the Mountains, an album I recommend you check out. It's pretty cool. I even actually have some copies uh, if anyone wants to uh, buy it. But I feel that at that stage we were really starting to find a pretty cool sound and Immortal was definitely a big influence to us without us actually knowing what we were doing. We, we knew what we were doing was sometimes in the same vein feeling as Immortal but we didn't exactly know if we were doing it the right way but it turned out that we were actually using the same chords but of course Immortal is really important to the history of black metal and they have captured the essence of portraying winter and just general sadness and epicness and all that stuff. Through my short period of playing with Abbott, I was lucky enough to, you know, get an inside view on what he does when he's composing music. And he might not have such a good reputation uh, as a guitar player, but I would actually like to, to use the opportunity to say that he might not be John Petrucci, but he's a great songwriter and he actually uses a lot of chords that I was very surprised to, to see what kind of chords he was using to create this, this uh, kind of unique, immortal sound. Another thing uh, they do a lot, or he does a lot, is using these kind of chords. <laughs> Might not be Van Halen, John Petrucci, but it definitely he has made some songs that will go into history books because of uh, their awesomeness. And uh, I have nothing but respect for him as a musician. And I hope that you can get something from the chords I just showed you. Now at the, at the end of the video, I'm now just gonna play these chords again and show them more in detail to you just to give you a more in-depth view on what these chords look like. Let's do one by one first. You have the power chord, seven on the A string, nine on the D string. Then go to the minor chord or the dyad shit thingy. A string, seventh fret, D string, fifth fret. You just move this up a half step. Yeah. Next riff, uh, seventh fret, A string, sixth fret, D string, ninth fret, G string. As far as I can remember it, and even if the song is called Old Shall Fall, I think it is. The main riff. Open E string. A, nine, A is 7th fret. 
5th fret on the G string and 9th fret on the G string. 2nd chord. 7th fret on the A string. 9th fret on the D string. 12th fret on the G string. This chord is 12th, 12th fret on the A string, 11th fret on the D string, and 14th fret on the G string. Last chord there is 9th fret on the A string, 12th fret on the D string, and 11th fret on the G string. I think that should cover it for now. The rest, when you're playing up here on the 14th fret, basically just the same chords. Do what I did, use your ear and just find these chords. I already showed you the chords, you just need to find the frets and the variations and you should nail it within a half an hour or so. Alright, thanks for watching, bye bye.